The city of Turanga is under some strain as of late. The presence of the United Nations peacekeeping forces can be felt everywhere. There are more walls than there used to be, more soldiers, more guns, rooftops laid bare and streets plagued by good intentions. But if those rifles are for our protection, why are they aimed inward? The threat is the pretext, but the subtext is something far more troubling. Umarangi Generation's cityscape is strangely at odds with itself. It's a world that can't stop, brought screeching to a halt, and its denizens resent such lack of motion. Living beasts folded into stasis, breathing dioramas constrained by fear and oppression. It's an environment mid-destruction. An eschatological epoch where art, music, and love somehow manage to prevail despite all the detritus. Umarangi Generation doesn't tell its tale in the traditional sense. You aren't hunting down lore dumps or scrawling through conversation trees. There are no cutscenes delivering neatly packed morsels of exposition. There is only the world, and you, and your camera. In such obscura, a lens through which all manner of fable can be fabricated. No words need escape lips, no reams of text need adorn screens, and there is no call for cinema. You can see the story, it's right there, in front of you, around you. You're a part of this. Umarangi Generation tells its story through such a frame, but you are not an independent entity. Equipped with an array of lenses, filters, and shutter speeds, tasked with snapping the essence of a world on fire, the subjects that you capture are not alien to you. A wayward boombox sat stoically aside long-forgotten pallets, a seabird perched precariously on a fallen fence, neon punks skating on the spot to the latest bangin' tunes courtesy of DJ Tarek or trustworthy vanguards sneaking off for a quick cigarette behind the barracks. These things aren't silhouettes printed firmly onto a static canvas for the world to enjoy, remiss of the context in which they really sit. They are breathing components of the world in which you reside. You can't just snap your objectives and wash your hands of things. You're in this. And I say this with confidence because the game knows the difference between a picture taken in close proximity and one taken from afar. Your objectives aren't simply to scour the world for trinkets and archetypes and photograph them in a vacuum. You have to consider composition, spatial coherence, lens type, altering reality through creative decision, giving meaning to solitary things through their relation in space and time to others. But not the blue bottles. Keep them out of frame. Indeed, Umarangi Generation tells its story through its mechanics quite naturally, offering you prompts as to what it wants you to do, but utilising these things as ways to allow you to see the world in a more intimate light. In the base game, it uses this to showcase the day-to-day -day struggle of trying to make a living during a crisis, your objectives equating to a pittance in the bank, most of which is spent on upgrades. You never see the finer details because they don't really matter to the tone that the game is trying to affect. In the macro DLC, this is turned on its head. The further you get in, the harder it becomes to distance yourself from the reality of your own responsibilities. Eventually, your score transitioning from a financial incentive to a more well, abstract idea of being disenfranchised and struggling to have your voice heard, I guess. That's the interesting thing about this game. There's a list, and bonus objectives, and a time limit, albeit one for which exceeding is not a death knell. One would be forgiven for thinking this as Tony Hawk's Antifa photographer. It is, if that's what you want from it. Another vessel for mastery, trapping the world at lightning pace, learning the optimal route to grab up every piece of its puzzle. But it's more than this. If you're willing to take a breath, ignore your job, and luxuriate in the end of the world. There's something so very tangible about the relationship you have with your camera. There are things that you see that it cannot, and vice versa. You have to trust one another. To employ a juxtaposition between the physicality and locomotion of the world, which at times seems like a chemical reaction mid-bubble, and the stark, finite textures of the realm within the frame. Except, the world itself seems so very finite, and the realm within the frame so malleable. If we take these slices of Turangan life at their most literal, they are, of course, dioramas. 
static playgrounds that employ clever tricks and thoughtful art direction to feel alive. When the shutter comes down and you commit something of the world to canvas, it feels like you're capturing but a fraction of a moment. It's clear there's something else going on here. A display of frustration as the people in power fail to properly rise to the occasion to protect their citizens. A willfully ignorant necessitation that life has to go on as normal, even as the threat bangs on the door. It's not just their art, it's yours too. In capturing that fraction of a moment, you are committing something of yourself to paper. Your photographs sit themselves in a folder on your desktop hard drive, escaping one digital realm for another. There's something wonderfully meta about this small edition. It feels like a crucial part of how the experience is held together. It serves a function, but it's not a fiction. You can't just close the book, turn your head, and have it all simply vanish. The record of your deeds remains. You're in this. Umurangi Generation tells its story both within its medium, through environmental cues and visual prompts, and using its medium as an expression of creativity and understanding. The game shows you the objects and persons of this shitty future, gives you the tools to capture something more about them, but ultimately, it's up to you to understand what's being said here, what's really going on, how it is all a reflection of the world as it really is, how you are in this, and at some point, you're going to have to choose a side.